Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the saints. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. I the Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your work reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen myself a king among his sons. When Samuel arrived, he caught sight of Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. He then asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had him sent for, a boy of fresh complexion, with fine eyes and pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood with his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord seized on David and stayed with him from that day on. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my dripping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right living and truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you, having nothing to do with the futile works of darkness, but exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret are things that people are ashamed even to speak of, but anything exposed by the light 
will be illuminated and anything illuminated turns into light. That is why it is said, wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. He spat on the ground, made a paste with the spittle, put this over the eyes of the blind man, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name that means scent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. His neighbours and people who were there had seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, He put a paste in my eyes, and I washed, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself? now that he has opened your eyes. He is a prophet, replied the man. Are you trying to teach us, they replied, and you a sinner through and through since you were born? And they drove him away. Jesus heard they had driven him away, and when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the fourth Sunday of Lent, and we've just heard the Gospel text of the man born blind from the Gospel of St. John. It's the second of three stories aimed at those who are due to be baptised this Easter Vigil. A part of the, the deep logic of Lent is that it's about the preparation of those who are going to be baptised and our accompanying them towards the baptism and confirmation and Eucharist for the first time at the Easter Vigil. And so it's about helping them get ready in all our churches throughout the diocese and in fact throughout the world, of course. The three stories, the Samaritan woman last week and the man born blind this week and Lazarus next week form, as it were, a suite of stories with a similar theme. The Samaritan woman last week, well, she's a Samaritan, she's a foreigner as far as the Jews were concerned. She's a woman alone at the well, and she's someone whose life morally was in a bit of a mess. And yet Jesus breaks through that. He breaks through it and calls her, calls her to conversion, calls her to life, calls her to love. And through all of that, all of those problems that she had, he still wants to call her to change her life and to be the person that she was made to be. Today, the man born blind, it's similar, but it's slightly different. He, he finds himself blind from birth. It's not his fault. This is the way he is. And yet Jesus, once again, goes to him, just as he went to the Samaritan woman, goes to him, calls him, and his life is utterly transformed. 
Jesus calls him, he breaks through a barrier, which is a physical one. He breaks through it and he calls him to conversion, to life and to love. And what does he say at the very end to Jesus? He says, Lord, I believe. There's a great statement of faith at the end of that wonderful story. He wasn't looking for Jesus and yet Jesus comes looking for him. And he changes his life and he transforms his life. We find ourselves limited at the moment by the health crisis that surrounds us at this time. There is a kind of physical barrier, there is a kind of health barrier, if you like, that's not unlike what the blind man was facing. And yet, in spite of all these health restrictions, you and I are still called by Jesus. We are still called to conversion, we are still called to light and to love. We are still called, in spite of the fact that we're not able to celebrate Mass together, to keep the Sabbath day holy, to spend time in prayer with our families, and to make this day special to the Lord. One day we will be able to do that again together, but for now, let's listen to that comforting word of the Lord, who calls us, no matter who we are, no matter what we are, no matter what we have become, whether it's by our own hand or not, Let's listen to his voice, let's change our lives, and let's open ourselves up to be enlightened, just like those who will be baptised at Easter Vigil, to be enlightened into a world of faith and love and closeness to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent, that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. the peace and prosperity of peoples, that all nations will grow in harmony and cooperation with each other to the good of all, especially the poorest and weakest. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, we remember especially those affected by the spread of the coronavirus and other serious diseases, that the Lord will look kindly upon the world and spare his people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the frail, the elderly, those close to us, and those unknown to us, that in the midst of present difficulties, the weak and isolated will not be forgotten, but will be cared for by the family, friends, and the wider community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died recently, that the Lord will welcome them, with all their sins forgiven, into his kingdom of light, happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we will rise by God's grace to the challenges of our times and face them with courage and determination for the good of the church and the whole of our society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pause for a moment to add our special prayers in silence.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, our loving Father, listen to all these prayers which we make aloud and in the silence of our hearts, and with the powerful intercession of our great patrons Andrew and Margaret, grant us what is good for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith that has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew and St. Margaret, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For by the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord anointed my eyes, I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God.
let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendour of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.